I'm at the bank making money, making moves. Machines with tools and drills, making grooves. Missions impossible. That's lots of... Welcome back to In the Green. This is Norley, your host. Uh, and today I'm very happy to say we've got Kelly Allen with us. How are you, Kelly? I'm wonderful. And you? I'm doing great. Thank you. Kelly, tell us, where are you today? Where am I today? I am in Washington State. And how's everything there? It is sunny and beautiful where I'm at. Oh, that, well, that's wonderful. We had a sunny day here in London as well, but it's quite crisp and cold. So uh, oh. the, the autumn has arrived, that's for sure. So Kelly, I would like to know, how did you fall into investing? And I saw you've been on the app for about three months now with a spectacular performance. But tell us a little bit about your first uh, entry into the markets. Well, honestly, in 2009, I had a little tiny IRA that I needed to roll over. Right. And I opened a Fidelity account because my original account um, it was through like Smith Barney, which right. was sold to someone else. And so I had to kind of relocate the money. Right. And it was a month or when the market was sort of going down into this recession situation. So yes. I only had dollars and I was like, well, what am I going to do with it? And I put it all into Apple. Okay. Wow. You took one big bet. And I, exact, I did exactly. And, and was that emotional or was it just, you loved everything about Apple? You love Steve Jobs. What was it that drove that decision? That's what it was. It was brand loyalty. I right. can't say the reason than that. I had no market research, nothing. I just was right. like, I, Buy what I you love. Yeah, and I had just got my first iPhone, and I was like, "This is this is going to be big." So, um, you're right. So then, ten years later, um, enter the quarantine from COVID, right. and you know we're all just sitting here bored to tears. And so I was like, "When you say you we're know, all, I'm, who's that? You, you and your family?" Oh, right. Yes, my husband and my kids, and trying to find some hobbies to do because right. there's nothing going on. Honestly, I totally forgot about my Apple investment. Okay, because it had been, I never logged in. Oh so, my goodness! So they've been sitting there just growing, and that was maybe a blessing in disguise. What do you think? Yeah, exactly. Because if I had been watching it, I probably would have sold it off. Right. So I just so I noticed it, and I was like flabbergasted that my I was up like fourteen hundred percent in gains, and so. Incredible. <laughs> That's incredible. Right. And I just had my second stock split too. And I didn't even know that I had one in 2014. So I ended up with 400 shares uh, at eight share. Right. And so for somebody who has no idea what they're doing, that was actually pretty exciting. So I, I needed to figure out how to learn how to trade stuff without actually losing all my money. Right. And that's when I the investor app, because I was like, this is great. This is great because it's pretend so right. that's and it's not very glamorous but that's what happened no but you know it's a fantastic story that you're telling because as you said you had an IRA account you were trying to take charge of it you decided to buy something you loved which I'm a big proponent of doing and then by not watching it you just let it sit there and grow you know and compound all of that growth over 10 years and then taking the initiative to learn. I mean, I, I think it's fantastic. I mean, I thought it was really funny when I saw your profile and <laughs> you, you had just joined and you put trophy wife. <laughs> and I, thought, I thought, okay, this woman sounds really fun and, and interesting. <laughs> and then I saw your returns the past three months and you've been up over 90%, which is fantastic. I saw you finish the academy. So tell us, what have you been doing different besides buying Apple over these past three months? What have you learned that's contributed to that? Uh, a lot. And one of the first things I did was obviously finish that academy, which, um, well, believe it or not, it was actually like kind of challenging. So, really? I mean, I, did you have I your husband learned. do it? No, no, no. And, you know, here's the other thing. When I um, made my account, the whole point was for um, 
me to figure out like strategies, but also I wanted to get my kids involved in it. So I, I made us our own private league. So how is that going with the kids? Well, at first they were like doing, you know, they were actually really active until I started like beating everyone. And then they all just sort of ditched me. So I, <laughs> I was alone in my league. Nobody looks at their numbers anymore, but I just was like, you guys are really right. missing out. A little intimidated by mom's like, you know, boss mentality. And that's just what's, what's the driving force. But yeah, the, the family was supposed to be involved and now I'm just a woman alone on, on the league. They've did, well, you got to get them to get in their own league without you. That way they don't feel threatened by your performance. Right. And well, and the other thing is like, they aren't learning this stuff in school. So right. it's important that they understand. And then, um, so my daughter's 15 and then I opened up her a, um, Roth IRA for a minor right. and started trading some money for her too. Cause she got her first job over the summer. Oh. So I wish my parents would have had something like that for me when I was 15, because I could have been a millionaire by now. No, but it's wonderful because you're trying to instill that knowledge that you need for life, really, to know how to manage your finances, how to start investing, saving, you know, a little bit. And like you did, maybe even just buying and forgetting about it for 10 years is probably not a bad strategy sometimes as well. And I also watch a lot of um, Mad Money and I watch um, Power Lunch on CNBC. Yes. I was glued to that when I used to be in the markets. I'd listen to that practically 24 seven. Right. And I read sometimes it can hurt you though, because it gets you thinking too much, doing too much. Yeah. There is a lot to have to sort of grasp when you're trying to figure out what is your best option if you're new to the game. But yeah, I mean, it's so kind what's of your one strategy. Of the so what have you been doing these past three months for your returns? Well, I've been trying to, to, um, learn the swing trade. So I'm following a lot of charting and, um, and then I actually like got a, the big program on my computer so I can do it every, I can see more charts all at one time. Right. And, um, and it, it does actually work if you're willing to put the time into following the graph, but right. Um, and especially other than that market environment as well, I think people are very, you know, reactive and responsive to, to news and, you know, every little news bite makes a difference. Yeah. And I'm a little concerned about going into the next month to see like what's going to happen and if it's even going to be, helpful. but, um, with the elections you're saying, right. Yeah. With all the political stuff going on, it just seems to be sort of um, volatile. So I don't, I am not really it sure. Is, that I'm it is strategy. It's volatile. I, I in fact posted an article today about what to, to buy in sort of uncertain times, particularly if we have a contested election, you know, safe stocks like Apple and gold and, uh, right. I think and Morgan Stanley was one that was recommended by UBS, but it, it's good to start thinking about these things now. Well, I saw that you were also in the $100,000 Investor Challenge League. So you never know. You, you might win the chance to manage $100,000 in November. So you better start thinking about that strategy now. What would you do? Oh, my. I would, I would, I would be, you know, glued to my computer if that were the case. Like, I would be like... OCD, I think, if, if I actually was managing real money in right. that text. Right. It wasn't even. So, yeah, that, I mean, that would be, that would be really cool, actually. But I'm kind of, I would be kind of. You know, the winner, the winner will get to keep all the profits that they make um, for the month that they're managing the money. So, assume you did your 30% a month, you'd walk, you'd, you'd make $30,000 in, in a month. Just, which isn't a bad thing to do. And it's a really good thing for a trophy wife on top of that. So it's, it's I'm, I'm a trophy wife and not what people would probably expect from a trophy wife. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. So and I mean, speaking of trophy wives, do your other friends, 
do they invest? Do you see your other female friends investing or do you feel like you're a lone ranger? Um, I do feel like a lone ranger, but I will say that I got my husband really, um, involved now with his own, like, um, IRA account instead of having, um, someone else sort of make the trades. And then also with the, all sorts of different things that we didn't know about that we've learned since we started the fantasy finance game. But I wish my friends would get involved because then I'd have like somebody to like bounce ideas off of, but yeah, you should should invite them to a private league make it fun and make it, make it social. You can, you know, talk about your, your stocks besides, you know, talking about your families and everything else that's happening in the world. Yes, I need to do that. That, that is a good idea. And Kelly, can you tell me what's been the best part of investor? What do you enjoy the most about the app? I actually enjoy a lot of the feedback that comes through from, um, you guys that are giving some tips on who's going to be um, releasing earnings and what to watch. Right. Um, stuff that is actually really helpful for planning your actual strategy outside of fantasy finance as right. well as being able to ask questions from the community. And that isn't something that you can get in any of your real day trading apps. So right. I think that's the most valuable part of it. I mean, it's, but it's also really fun too, on top of it. Well, well, that's wonderful to hear. And we've actually got an exciting new launch coming up soon of investor plus. I can only tell you that, but Given what you've told me already, I know you're going to love it and you're going to be probably all over it and dominating. So yeah, I'll look forward to getting your comments once it's live. Well, Kelly, I've really enjoyed speaking to you today. I wish you a lot of luck in the $100,000 investor challenge. And I look forward to seeing how this month uh, plays out for you. Awesome. Thanks for having me. And one last question. Any top stocks for this month? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm kind of um, liking CRISPR right now, and I don't know that that's actually in the fantasy finance um, instruments. I don't even know what CRISPR is. Okay, well you're you're <laughs> gonna want to because I'm gonna go Google it right now. I think it might be an up and coming one, and I've already made some money on it, so. Okay. Well, let, let me know because I can get it added to fantasy finance. Oh yeah, definitely. It's a, it's a, it's a medical gene editing company. Okay. Well, that's a hot space. So it's definitely one to watch and one I'm going to speak to our team about getting added if it's not already there. That's a, a great tip. And Kelly, thank you again. Really enjoyed speaking to you and enjoy the rest of your day there in Washington. Thank you. You too. Making money, making moves. Machines with tools and drills, making grooves. Missions impossible. I am not a financial advisor and my comments should never be taken as financial advice. Investments come with risks, so always do your research and analysis beforehand.